for love once again. I'm a big big girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello and welcome to Big Week. Big Week is a series that examines the life of lawyers who are not into litigation. Lawyers that have made a name for themselves in the niche area of the law that they have excelled in. The future are the young people coming in and hopefully yeah. they'll be abreast with what is going on in the world and bring the um, best practices and we just will not be surprised by disruptions that are going to take place because they will take place yeah. but we need to be ready for them. We can even make you a native yeah, yeah. Lawyer can rap or sing In fact, lawyer can do anything yeah, yeah. Our Big Week today has over 26 years of experience in the transactional and dispute resolution aspects of Nigerian corporate law. He's the managing partner and head of the Energy and Projects Group at Templars, I'm sure you know who we're talking about. He's also an advocate of gender, cultural and religious diversity. Ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about no one else but Ogogo Akbata. Thank you very much, Ogogo Akbata, for having us. How are you doing? How's, um, how's the legal life treating you, if you would say in a nutshell? Well, um, first of all, thank you for coming over. <laughs> and uh, with regards to our legal life is treating me, I, I, th I would say to you that it's exciting. We're doing what we like doing. And the marketplace in the legal profession, it's, um, it's dynamic. So yeah. it's all good. We're, 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 very doing, well said. we're doing very well. I like to call myself a Bini boy, even if I'm not from Edo State. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was born and bred in Bini City, actually. Okay. Um, so I'm always very excited when I meet people who have sort of rare roots there. Um, so I just want to go back to, you know, growing up and how, you know, growing up has shaped who you are today, basically. Well, to a large extent it has, but I grew up in various cities. Yeah. I spent my early years in Benin, then subsequently in Wari, then my teenage years in Kaduna, then subsequently Lagos. So, um, Bini boy, Wari boy, I don't know what they call the Cardona boy, <laughs> but then the Lagos boy. So I've seen quite a bit. I've seen quite a bit, and it's made me realize um, different um, stratas of, um, of the society, as it were. In Wari, we were in school, secondary school. In Lagos, one now became aware of what one could possibly be to be successful in life. And yeah. So more towards an industrial, professional setting in Lagos. So yeah. that's what my shape. And I guess it also kind of shaped your sort of, I mean, not to get political or anything, but you've literally lived in all corners of the country is basically what I'm Correct. getting. Yeah. So it gives you an open mind. And does that help in running a business or being a part of a business? Because law is a business, isn't it? Correct. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's um, shaped who I am as a person. It's also made um, uh, my law firm diverse. So I look at everyone from all parts of the country. We've got lawyers from as far as Kano in, in our Templars, I mean, Edo State, Delta State, all over the country. So yeah. I have an idea of the way um, the country runs, as well as clients from all over the country. So the relationships I've built in various parts of the country has helped significantly. Growing up, whether I was in being in worry, Kaduna, Lagos. Was there ever a person who you sort of saw and were like, oh, this could be the guy? Mentor, role model, even if the person didn't know, did, was there an image or person in your life growing up that was sort of a... Well, I mean, I grew up in a legal family. My dad, my uncle. I grew up in a, what we call um, judges' quarters and all that. Okay. So there were always lawyers and judges all through my growing up. Um, uh, early growing up um, years. So I saw all that. I um, had an uh, affinity towards the legal profession. Then I um, uh, went to law school. Before law school, actually, while I was trying to get to university, I was in the liberal arts, so I also saw things like um, theology of law and okay. the subjects I did. So I, would, I, I definitely had a trajectory towards that. But what crystallized everything was when I um, practiced law in a law firm in, in Lagos. That just made me know that this is where I want to be. I saw a different um, perception towards practicing law, which was most exciting. Do you think you would have 
studied law if you didn't have that many lawyers around you? Consciously or not? They were an influence, were they? Well, it's unlikely, actually. It's unlikely because that's almost all I knew, yeah. you know? And besides maybe being a lawyer or an accountant, right? It was, it was going to be one of the professional courses that one would have gone into and law just suited my, uh, my personality. So I was led there, you yeah. know, perhaps unconsciously, but that's where, <laughs> that's where I, yeah. I landed. And I'm happy that um, I had the influence of it. I always wonder when I meet lawyers like you, who have been in profession for a while, if they went to school today, mm. you know, there's, parents are more receptive of saying, no, oh, I want to study music, or mm -hmm. I want to be a dancer, or <laughs> whatever it is. Mm. If you were going to school today, with your personality knowing yourself and knowing what you know now, would you still do law? Well, perhaps I'm, um, I'm still old school. Um, <laughs> I, I see my kids, my daughter says to me, Daddy, Mary, I want to, I want to study, what did she call it the other day? Some far-fetched um, <laughs> um, undertaking. And I was like, no, you have, to be a lawyer. you have to be a lawyer, right? <laughs> and she's like, no, I don't have to be a lawyer. So I think I would still want to practice law or study law if I, today, I have known nothing but law since um, in the last, say, is it 33 years or so that I've been a lawyer, or 31 years that I've been a lawyer, and that's where, that's still the way I still say, where I still say myself. Yeah. Um, so to answer your question, I believe I will still study yeah. law. So your family, of course, was very supportive of your decision. Of course, yeah, full support. It's uh, something that um, I'm, we're a family of lawyers, so yeah. we're all there. What about the practice after law school, like you said, made you, give you that moment? Was it a case you were working on? Was it someone at the office who you worked with? Or was it just the fact that you were in this law firm and you realized this is fun, or this is where I should be? I got out of law school and I was privileged to practice in a famous law firm. And in that law firm, I saw another vista of what a law lawyer could be. I saw international work. I saw international disputes. I saw international corporate work. I saw big M&As and big energy um, divestments, acquisitions, farming. So it was just um, inevitable that I said to myself, uh, and then actually um, in the early 90s, I actually was, I started working in this law firm in 1991, right, uh, December 1991. And, um, then it was fax machines that uh, we used to get work. And every day we go to the office, when we go get to the office in the morning at 9 a.m., there's a fax, um, new instructions, either from a P&I club, uh, asking for a ship arrest, or for one of the major um, oil and gas corporations in the world, saying they are coming to Nigeria and they want you to advise them on the Petroleum Act. So it was, it was enriching. And I said to myself, this is what I want to be, this is who I want to be, that every day, that I, I mean, I need to set up this kind of firm. So that made me know that this is what I want to do. When what was possible? Of, yeah. Some people <laughs> get, try to be defensive when the money talk comes about. My question basically is how much of a factor did money play in this sort of, oh wow, as we say in Nigeria, money did decide, you know, you just probably realized, yeah. oh, this, there's actually money in this law thing. Because you have people who graduate from law school today who are constantly complaining about how much they get paid. Yeah. You, know, you graduated, you realize, oh, I can actually do this thing and make good money out of it. How much of a role do money play in your excitement about the profession? <laughs> well, I mean, good question. <laughs> good question, but um, I will be counterintuitive here because um, there's this perception, oh, Templars, or go go money and all that <laughs> stuff, right? Oh, there but, is. Yeah, there is, right? <laughs> but the truth about it is, perhaps at the early stages of one's life, one thinks yeah. about money to get along, right? You want to be able to have the basic necessities in life, to be able to have a car and all that. So it would be uh, hypocritical of me to say otherwise, to say, yeah. um, right? But that was at very early stages. But insofar as one could afford the basics. That's why at Templars, what we've made sure is that we don't have lawyers that 
cannot afford the basics. Their salaries, I think we're... I think, we're, I think we all know that. Exactly. Yeah. So, so to me, so that's the first stage. You need to get yourself to, I mean, get the lawyers to be able to have the basics, right? Then um, with regards to me, I just enjoy doing what I do. It's the client that comes first to me. I push to win um, opportunities to get cases and all that, but honestly, what drives me is not so much as what we get paid. It comes inevitably from it, but that is not the main driver to me. Yeah. The main driver is the prestige, the um, solving problems for the clients, right? So it's a mixed bag, money and getting things done and making clients' objectives achieved. So how long were you at this law firm that you're refusing to name? Um, I was there uh, for like, um, doo -doo -doo. I was there, I left in 1995. To? Um, to set up templates. Okay. Yeah. So Why I was there for about four years. So I'm guessing, are you still in your 20s or your 30s at this time? Late 20s. Late 20s. Late 20s. Yeah. So in your late 20s, um, what was the agenda at this time? What were you trying to achieve with your partners? What was the plan? Okay, I'm going to tell and you. Where did you get the guts from? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you a story. I was in this law firm, okay. FYI Law Firm, it's 188 Awolo Road, okay. right? Fantastic law, law firm, fantastic lawyers. And um, I eventually left after four years to set up my firm. As I said from the onset, that while at FYI Currently and Co., I saw law practice in a different um, yeah. so. Just like a good student, I was just kept learning and learning yeah. and learning. And um, it so happened that um, I eventually decided to set up my law firm. But um, I guess the second limb of your question was how, how, how was I was able to compete. Or the, yeah. I, um, I set up this law firm. The story is that when I set up the law firm, I realized that um, I'm a young guy at 27 years old, and there are older law firms already in, um, in existence, corporate law firms that I definitely couldn't compete with in the marketplace. Um, and I called my law firm Templars, and they were going to say, what, this? We, there's this famous saying we say in the office, I want LA. I don't speak Yoruba, but that's what we say, what, this? Is that, is that correct? Yeah. Right, right, that's, what we, that's what we call, that's what we always teased ourselves with, that they would say this. But we said to ourselves, instead of going on Broad Street and Lake corporate, Lake, corporate Nigeria to compete for work, we will not be able to do that because they're going to say, what, these young upstarts? So, the strategy was to um, try and um, show what we could do to the international community whom will not be relying on who you are, how many years are you at the bar, what's your father's name. As long but as you can get the work done. Exactly. So this ultimately, this, uh, we ended up being on the opposite side of the established law firms. And um, with time, the, um, the local um, clients and corporates and law firms and lawyers began to take note of our achievements, so yeah. that's, that's the way it was. You say, how are you and how many of you were there? Initially, started the firm with about, um, Olu was there a year or two, maybe two years after um, the firm was started with. Um, I had a partner called Antonio Sai who joined, I think, a year after I opened the firm. So we're about about six, we started from the first day and we had about six lawyers. So we we're quite audacious. If you say in 1995, you opened a law firm in Ikoi with about six lawyers. And they call us aggressive, and so that's... And you're happy with that? Yeah, we own it. <laughs> yeah. So like I said, what was the plan? And you said, okay, so were you, you're going to play in the corporate space, mm. but not compete with the local space, if, I, if I'm getting you right. With the guys who were already established here, you were Initial, trying to carve a path for yourself. Yes. Yeah. And so, at what point did you realize this plan was working? Was there a deal that happened down the line where you realized, okay, it looks like we're getting something right? Or was it just organic, slowly? Well, I mean, um, two years after, we knew we were doing something good. Right, yeah. Uh, we were um, involved on the other side in arbitration with... Um, one of the leading SANs, right? I'm representing a big major Asian corporation and we are doing arbitrations in London, Seoul and Lagos. This is before the, in the 90s. So 1998, we're doing that already, 1997. And then we're representing um, the largest company in the world, then General Electric, 
right? And um, one of my dear friends, who is one of, uh, one of the, if not the leading lawyer in, um, in the corporate space, says to me every time, oh, God, you got that client because you play golf with him, <laughs> right? But we, but we knew that we were, we were successful in, um, initially. So that's when we felt we were getting their attention and um, in the early 2000s during the privatization phase, we won the uh, re reorganization of NEPA. Uh, we did the restructuring and reorganization yeah. to break into generating... Okay, uh, the money, Jenkos, Jenkos and Discos, Discos and, and, and the yeah. natural monopoly. So we did all that. But um, subsequently, uh, we no longer think um, we're playing. We know we are playing in the space. So. I, I ask a lot of those questions for a lot of people now who oh. wonder, is this ever going to be possible again? Mm. Where a 28-year-old guy mm. and six of his guys, OK, let's start something and shake up the system. Do you still think that's possible today? Um, will Templars have succeeded if you started in 2022? Well, let me say, let me put it this way, right? We're trying our <laughs> utmost to make sure they don't do that to us, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's why I'm still working. Uh, that's why Dio and Co, everybody, we're pushing them to say, uh, we're, we're our Templars. Still yeah, we're still here. We're <laughs> growing. We're not sleeping on our hours. We are pushing every day. We have over 100 lawyers or Templars. Yeah. So we make sure that we compete. Like you know in the UK and in America and other parts of the world you have what we call the magic circle law firms, right? In London there are five firms and the white shoe in the States. And they've been there for hundreds of years being the leading law firms. A friend of mine says to me, how did you guys get in? One of the <laughs> law firms that said we thought this was a closed space but we yeah. think we forced our way in there. And um, they had no choice but to recognize that we, we, we deserve to be there. Yeah. So the um, a guy that comes up with six of his friends, he has to do the work. He has to be there and um, play the long game. And uh, we just never know. But it's not, in a, it's not impossible. But uh, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm going to give up my position for them because <laughs> we're, going, we're going to be continuously being hungry. No one says you have to have um, only top 10 law firms. I mean, top 11. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Do you understand? You could be 12, you know, but you could be there. You yeah. could be there scale, competencies and all that. They can bridge the gap in which you don't feel underserved. The client will not feel underserved if it's a Templars that is doing the work or is able to and co. And so far as they see that yeah. the standards are the same and they will just say, well, Templars, they are just too greedy. They like money too much. <laughs> they put their, their, their fees are this and these guys' fees are just below them and they can do it as well as Templars, yeah. right? So, so I think um, it can be done. They should just definitely not give up. You mentioned Ibuka and Co, and I've always wondered why wasn't it Akpata and Co, or Akpata and whoever. No, no. For such a conservative profession, Templars yeah. seemed very rebellious. <laughs> well, to me well, time. well. <laughs> in truth, right, um, while at FRI Creator and Co, before I left the firm, we, um, a friend and I decided we should set up a law firm. But we were trying to be um, um, different. In the 90s, it's um, FR, Crane & Co, this, uh, your nameplate partners. Yeah. We didn't want a nameplate partner, uh, partnership. So we said, okay, let's come up with um, a name. And um, Templars uh, was tossed up, right? And, and Templars was two knights upholding the law. And if you go to the Black's Law Dictionary, that's what it says. At least that's my recollection. Yeah. Two knights upholding the law. And, but that's a question that's often asked of me. is like, why Templars? It was just fortuitous. It's not. Be, it was not planned. But we just know that we didn't want to say Akpata and and uh, Akpata and the other name, right? We just said, well, let's call it something different. What's changed about Templar's sort of philosophy from when it started to now? Because, like you said, you've evolved and you've become one of the the. You know, That's what you're saying, right? right. So, uh, are we? You are definitely in the conversation whenever mm. those names come up. Mm -hmm. So. Has your philosophy changed from where, when you were building with these six guys to where the firm is now, you know, one of the top ones? Well, our philosophy has not changed, in truth. Um, the philosophy from the onset was driven by um, trying to be the best at, from the onset. As I said to you, um, starting a law firm, six of us, I could tell you a story, actually. 
I, I just got married then. My mother-in-law had a shop in um, Iboshire, I think. Where's the lost um, um, Icot? It's in Iboshire, yes, in Iboshire. She had the two. Well, she had one of the shops there, and she says, "Oh, God, you can come and have this room." And I said, "Well, mommy, thank you very much, but I, I've got big eyes." And I went to Eco instead, right? <laughs> so I've always felt to get the best, get a good office from the onset. And in truth, the lawyers from the, that, we, that started working with me at Templars were top quality lawyers, well schooled, well trained. And um, so we did everything well from the onset. So that was the philosophy that we started Templars on. It's a culture of excellence. And that, I think, is what has put us where we are today. We don't cut corners. Um, we've been at the Octagon Building, arguably an old building now. But in 1998, when we moved into the Octagon Building, it was arguably the best office complex in Victoria Island. Island yes. For a law firm that was just three years old, we moved into... Uh, How did you get to pull something like that off, though? Well, three years after you started? <laughs> we were audacious. We got, I mean, we were working hard. We are putting, we we're, we're, we're winning work, and we are putting the money back into the yes. practice. I didn't buy, go buying cars or doing flashy things, putting the money back, paying lawyers. So our philosophy is to have the best lawyers, office space, clientele. So with the kind of work we get and we do, it attracts lawyers. Good lawyers want to work in very good law firms. They don't want to do my favorite uh, words or phrase that I say in the office is, we don't do plain vanilla here, right? We want to do complex commercial work transactions or complex commercial um, disputes. How would you describe success? Like what is success for you? And is this something looking back at the last 30 plus years, you would say, yes, I probably have, you know, hit a few marks here and there. We're developing people. So that's what makes me very happy and makes me know that we are being successful. And there's a lot of them where um, young lawyers out of law school. That's what, what, what makes me um, um, pretty um, pleased is that I, um, when um, the law school um, results come out and the lawyers want to go out on their youth service school, the, the amount of um, demand to work I, at Templars yeah. is so... And I'm like, why? Why do they want to work here so badly, if you know? Yeah. But, so it makes me feel that we're doing something right. And I know I heard of Templars because I, I didn't live in Lagos. Okay. I was born in Benin, moved yeah, to Abuja. Yeah. And I think I heard about Templars for the first time in law school. Yeah. Because everybody who came from Lagos kept talking about this place. I'm like, what's, are they sharing money here? What's really happening? <laughs> so that's actually very true is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it's, I mean, so, so that to me, that's... Yeah, um, a lot of young lawyers that love. That makes me feel very yeah. happy. You know, it's just like um, you come out of school, um, they are the real, uh, um, I don't want to say real smart people, but they want to work in uh, Goldman Sachs or they want to work in JP Morgan and all that. So, I mean, that we're in the conversation makes me feel very happy. At that level. Yeah. I know you said uh, the firm you worked at kind of shaped, Correct. you know, and you, Templars now is known for corporate law, as much as corporate law has so many. Mm -hmm. um, but what areas interested you the most? I know, I feel like oil and gas comes up a lot whenever your name comes up. Mm -hmm. Is that your sort of, you, you wake up from your sleep, you know how to hit the ground running regardless. What are the areas of specialization for you that you feel like? Um... Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> as you said, um, I'm regarded as an oil and gas expert. Yeah. That's the, the my initial calling. Yeah. But um, I would say in the last um, 15, 20 years, right, I've, been, I've done a lot more than oil and gas. I like complex commercial disputes. Right, um, obviously oil and gas as well. And as the managing partner of Templars, I get around to doing everything, anyway. right? Not necessarily paged on, right? Meaning I'm, I don't, I'm not going through the laws or the books, but I am involved in, um, in the strategic um, 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 advice to the clients on how to proceed. So um, oil and gas interested me because as I said, in my previous firm, uh, it was a famous oil and gas firm as well. And um, I saw a lot of opportunities there. 
And when I was growing up, I, I used I tell people I used to watch this movie. I mean, or this um, is it a sitcom or drama series called Dallas, right? Which was. Oh, yeah. um, an energy corporation in um, in Dallas, in Dallas. Actually, exactly, <laughs> right? And um, and all the intrigue and the acquisitions and the uh, disposals that went in there and the lawyers being called in. So I'm, I've always been a law, I mean, an oil and gas person at heart, but Templars is, um, we've got a um, multidisciplinary practice across the board, so yeah. I'm a jack of all trade now, sorry. What what's part of the law has surprised you the most in, in corporate law? In the last 30 years, because I know there was a time when oil and gas was the thing. Then there was a time when everybody who was going for a masters was doing marine law, or something around shipping. Mm -hmm. Then were, now it's tech. You know, everybody's yeah. trying to do something around tech law. I had my masters in intellectual property because I thought I could yeah. see the future, and I came back and nobody cared about IP at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I would have advised you. <laughs> yeah. So, what has surprised you? What did you not? I don't want to say you didn't see it coming, but what part of corporate law has been Oh wow, this is interesting that this is happening in this space. Well, I mean, um, <laughs> we've seen quite a bit, as you said. Yeah. Like, uh, but uh, what I didn't see coming really is the uh, advent of uh, the tech space. Yeah. In truth, the tech and space. And how quick it's happening. Yes, digital banking, um, various payment systems, and all that, right? And it's quick and it's dynamic. There's a lot of disruption in the mm -hmm. in the space. I mean, everywhere. So I didn't see that coming. We are trying to, as a firm, we've uh, we caught on quite a bit. We're we're trying to be um, a force in the space, but it's something that um, perhaps um, maybe in the last five five years ago, five to ten years ago, we should have prepared for that. Yeah. I didn't see that coming. So that's something that um, disrupt you, but. Another thing that is coming up, which I'm happy that we've seen coming, is energy transition, right? It's something that um, is going to be big in the, in the next five to ten years. So, yeah, so it's uh, more, more of the tech space that I didn't see coming. So perhaps I would have encouraged more of our law, the lawyers that went to do their masters to, to take care of technology law. Do you find that there is a sort of in the legal profession, a view of solicitors as not enough of, like, they're not enough. Not enough? Yeah, they're not, they're not real lawyers. Oh, is that what you meant? <laughs> right? not, are you serious? Do you face that? <laughs> I face that in my firm. That's why, that's why I face that in my firm. When we, when we, we, um, we tell the litigators and the essays mm. that maybe when we're doing promotions, the uh, litigators, the part, my partners, they are, I, I, I see that, but well, we are the real lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, the joke is on you. We think, we, without us, you can't be <laughs> that. <laughs> you, you understand? So definitely, even in my firm, is that, yeah. right? But, um, I mean, seriously, I think uh, we complement each other. Um, I strongly believe without um, solicitors, they won't be litigators. Because we, it, it's the solicitors that put the deals together that these guys um, litigate. So would you would you th support uh, a system where we go the way of the UK, where you graduate from law school and you're either a solicitor or a barrister? As against what we do here now, where it's a barrister and you think they should be separated? Well, in the UK, it's separated, and uh, I think. Commerce in the Western world or in the UK is so large that there is enough for for that luxury for that luxury to say so I'm just uh, I'm just a solicitor. I, that's what <laughs> I think. Or I'm I'm just there. But we have I'm just a barrister because there's so much going on that um, you have um, firms that are just barristers in Nigeria without prejudice to if they have a solicitor's work they will do. But I think um, having both in Nigeria is um, is the way to go. Yeah, it's the way to go. So going away from Templars now, I'm back to you because you're also on a few boards of companies and all of that. How does that work? Because I mean, running a, a firm, being on major boards, how does your mind navigate all of this? It's tough, extremely <laughs> tough. But um, I'm lucky that I have um, a firm that uh, of lawyers and partners that are very co are competent and uh, helpful. 
I mean, obviously, um, when I'm unavailable because of my board um, commitments, my partners um, step in on my behalf. It's it's a, it's it's difficult, but as you but you need to remember, um, I'm never an executive director on, in any board, so I'm an in, most times independent, non-executive. So it's not um, it's not like a day job. It's um, I think you're man, you've got two or three board meetings, or maybe every quarter one board meeting, right? And um, AGMs as well, but, and but you prepare. So it's. Um, one needs to give it a lot of one's time, right? But it's not, um, it does not overwhelm my responsibility to my yeah. clients, right? So it's, um, it's interesting, but um, it, um, it's part of the, it comes with the territory, right? Because one perhaps has become successful in what it does, and you have um, yeah. corporates wanting you to come and advise them and be on their boards to help. Does your clients. legal background ever come into play? Because mm. boards, board meetings are, they are not. They are not law firms. Yeah. But does being a lawyer help in any way? When no, definitely, this, definitely. I was um, I was on, at a board meeting about two weeks ago or a week ago, and something came up, and I, I mean, my legal background came up, and to say nope, what uh, was being proposed by this regulator was ultra virus the law, and that we should challenge it, and um, we pushed back, and um, it's. Um, it's paid up, and um, why I mentioned this because recently the managing director of the firm of the company called up and said, "Oh, one of the directors that was on the call, um, international directors that was on the call, was like, oh, we're very lucky and happy that we have a lawyer on the board. Yeah. Says so your question is very apt. Yeah, it does. It does help. Nice. It does help. Yeah. Are there maybe without necessarily mentioning the amount or anything? Yeah. But what's the biggest deal you've? gone through in the last 30 years? What's the one deal that stands out every time you think back at, you know, your Templar's time? Well, I mean, that's what we're, that's what we're created for, to do big deals, <laughs> right? So uh, it would be difficult to say to you that um, this is the biggest deal or that was the um, small deal. They're all big deals yeah. to us, right? But 30 years is a long time, right? Yeah, so, so no, we're 27 years. So let's say 20, 27, 27 years yeah. at Templates. I would say we've done a lot of interesting deals, but I could tell you that we did um, the Access Bank Diamond Bank um, merger, merger, which created the largest retail bank in Africa. It was something that uh, was conceptualized by us. We were part of it from the onset, oh, yeah. not, right? So it seems like a lot of work. Yes, <laughs> right? it was a lot of work, a lot of boardroom, um, yeah. um, structuring and um, um, there was a lot of regulatory interface. It was more complex than most people know. You know. Yeah. Um, three point something billion, 27 LNG financing, we did that. I told you about the um, restructuring and unbundling of NEPA. Yeah. Nobody talks about NEPA <laughs> anymore, but we, we, we acted for the BP to restructure and unbundle NEPA to say there will be no longer in NEPA, there will be Jenkos, maybe I think they said then there were maybe like 15 or 20 Jenkos, I can't remember what it was then. Distribution companies and, and one, nat one natural monopoly. That was, yeah. that was significant. Um, there was that, then there was the first, what we call the first project finance power plant in, uh, built power plant in Nigeria, the Azura power plant. The first, that was the first real project finance. Um, the way Nigeria gave a world, what we call the World Bank Partial Risk Guarantee, the first that would be given, it was all created, it was formulated and created yeah. and, um, there. Those are landmark, um, back to the company kind of um, transactions. It's, um, it's now things that have never been done. So that's the kind of stuff I would say. Um, like we just even did the um, Access Bank and um, what was it, 81 um, bond which had never been done before. When you do a bond, it's a tier two capital, which does not count in the capital. Of, uh, but for the first time, besides APSA Bank they, um, that had done it in Africa, this was the first time it was done. The um, Access Bank um, 81 Euro, Euro bond, which was done last year. It's the first. So we, uh, we always strive to do first yeah. of its kind. That's what makes also happy. So uh, there's not one, but a, a number of, um, of things. Yeah, that we look at as 
groundbreaking. Yeah. It's interesting that nothing you call there had oil and gas in it. Exactly. That's why I say to you, I mean, I mean we, we feel it's a, a misnomer where people say, oh, Templar is an oil and gas firm. But I mean, we've done the biggest oil and gas deals too, but that's not what we scream about. I mean, we did, um, we've done too many in the uh, Sinopec and buying IDAX, um, um, Sinoc buying Nexin, and um, we've, done, we've done quite a bit. I, I, I would rather not. Um, <laughs> Start uh, listing all yeah, of them. Yeah, I'd rather not do that, but we've done quite a bit in the I mean, gas space. I hear all this, and it makes sense to me why you are. I mean, I feel like every list you're on, Legal 500, uh, Energy and Natural Resources Lawyers in Nigeria by Chambers Global Guide, uh, Project Finance and Oil and Gas Lawyer, who's, who's legal, this, you're constantly on this list. Do these things matter to you? I know you are not necessarily the guy who wants to be out there, but it's also must feel good to be recognized, sometimes by your peers even, to say, okay, you're doing well. Do these recognitions oh. Well, I mean, to the extent that, um, I mean, you, one is human, so one likes accolades as well, you know, that you are recognized. In that regard, I'm happy about it, but it's primarily the people that one works with. It's, uh, it's not me. Um, my partners, the lawyers at the firm, they are the ones that project me to be in that space, to be, to be recognized. I perhaps come out as the guy that executes, but they, pre they prepare me for the, for, to be recognized. So I, it, will be, um, it will be unfair for me to um, go about thinking I'm, so, I'm a, such a superstar when they are really the stars, <laughs> right? But, um, so I try as much as possible when I see these things and I try to make sure because you know, you always, almost feel you're being dressed in, um, in clothes that you ought not to be dressed in because they're, 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 the smart guys are behind me. And as I say to everyone, I never hire anyone or in Templars that is not smarter than me. No, seriously, I mean, to me, my lawyers, I mean, I say my lawyers, the lawyers in Templars, my partners, you have, you have to be smarter than me because you have to, and so they make me look good, but they are smart. They are, they are the smart guys. You know, they are the smart guys. You know, you know that's that so, what I say. So, so yeah, the accolades are nice, but um, I don't get carried away by them at all. Sometimes I even get embarrassed. <laughs> the truth about it, you know? Speaking of accolades and uh, recognitions, of course, the senior advocates of Nigeria is seen as the pinnacle of um, anyone's law career in the country, and I always say that. There's sort of three categories uh, when it's been considered. There's litigators, then the academics even come before solicitors <laughs> most times. <laughs> I feel like we have a lot more academics, professors yeah. and all of that, who get to become senior advocates of Nigeria and solicitors almost never. Is it a case of not knowing how to, what the criteria should be, you think? For solicitors, because with academics, I guess you write a few books here and there. With the litigators, they say you appear at so, so and so and win a number of cases. With solicitors, what should be the benchmark? You think? Or does it even matter? Well, f first of all, we're content in our space <laughs> with, with solicitors, in my view. Our templates, we have two senior advocates of Nigeria currently, and perhaps more uh, in a very short space of time. As I said, I don't go to court, so this doesn't go to court. And as you know, the acronym SAN is Senior Advocates of Nigeria. We are not advocates, right? So we don't advocate in court. That said, I think it's most unfair that the solicitors that create the environment for these, ad for these guys to be able to go to court to own their skills to be great advocates, um, most of these groundbreaking things are created by solicitors. And the disputes that arise is what these guys go to litigate in court. And they get to be senior advocates of court and get all the privileges that come with it. And um, the solicitors that, I mean, look at this, look at, I'm sure you know all the other top firms and founding partners. They are not senior advocates of exactly. Nigeria. And um, it's, um, I think there's something to be done about it, but perhaps not called senior advocates because we are not advocates, but maybe they should. 
and frame something that is befitting of what we do and give we get the same privileges but perhaps not seen as because of Nigeria because we don't go to yeah. so yeah so I'm not um, I don't I'm, I don't feel underserved by say, uh, saying uh, I'm not a um, senior advocate of Nigeria. It's, it is what it is that we need to have senior advocates in, uh, in various firms to get the privileges in courts and all that, and we do have them. But um, if there's some form of recognition ultimately for solicitors that have excelled, that have created practices, and uh, I've done a lot of um, just the way these guys have done yeah, stuff. Started successful done stuff. firms. Yeah, not just so starting a successful firm, but and you've you've represented, uh, you've, cre you've represented, you've done groundbreaking transactions, right? Uh, you've created structures that are innovative. There should be criteria that you know, in which you would say, okay, these guys, they've done certain things that should be recognised, and they should get the privileges yeah. as well. So. Do you think that's ever gonna? Apple? change because uh, when Ulu, Ulu Akwata, who is of course a part of Templars was running for the NBA presidency I remember it was quite a conversation oh he's not even a senior okay. I'm like, but where is it ever written that he had to be that people felt like he was so disruptive yeah especially non-lawyers because it had become sort of a myth that this was the way it was supposed to be and that's how a tradition gets formed you know unconsciously mm -hmm. So do you think this tradition, where it looks like solicitors may never come into this space, will change? And if so, do you think it will happen soon? Well, I, I know the conversation has been going on for... It's probably getting louder now. Yes, the conversation has been going on for a, couple, a few years. It's getting louder. I understand there's been position papers being put out there, right? And um, it's something that has been considered and being um, talked about. So... Let's watch and see, and I, I hope um, uh, um, I hope it's given um, it's well considered. Let's put it that way, and yeah. um, it's um, I would um, I, I look forward to one day the um, seeing um, solicitors being um, given some form of recognition that uh, gives them certain privileges like uh, the senior advocates of Nigeria. What, was this even intentional? Because in the UK it's called the Queen's Council, right? Yeah, and uh, council kind of covers everything. I yeah, feel exactly. Like. So why exactly. did we have to put advocates? advocates well, I think initially, in I mean, initially <laughs> when um, um, in the seventies or so, yeah. uh, it was called the Queen's Council in Nigeria. Yes. And, uh, well, maybe indigenization. We changed it. Wanted to. I don't see your Council of Nigeria. It's an exclusive club for yes. the big boys. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so read up on you before this. A few things were jumping at me. You know, gender advocacy, philanthropy. These are things you're passionate about. Is this something you've always been passionate about or did you evolve? And what made you sort of start getting very interested in these spaces? With regards to gender um, equality, yeah. I, I don't even look at it as saying one is passionate about it. It's a natural consequence. Yeah. Where, I mean, why should um, one um, be more associated to a certain um, uh, gender than the other gender. So it's not something that I, I look at as... Um, I hear that, that, I mean, there's a push for that, right? And it's, it exists, yeah. right? But to me, it's never been well, one in which... A... Um, no, at, at Templars, um, mm. uh, we, we practice gender equality mm. significantly. We have over 60% of uh, our lawyers mm. and Templars are women. And the last round of partners that were just... Um, appointed as a Templars and 5% were women as well. So there's, perhaps we need to, even the, ma the male, <laughs> the the male need to start advocating. advocating for equality because in our Templars is more uh, women. And I, I mean, I don't believe in saying things about things like, oh, women are more trust. Well, no, that's not it. It's just equality for everyone. Yeah. I hear a lot of work as you've been talking. Um, even though I heard you talk about golf briefly somewhere, <laughs> what do you do outside of these Templars and you know your advocacy, whether it's conscious or not? What do you? Well, I play a lot of golf, right? I play a lot of golf. I've always played golf since I was in my teens or six years, four, five years old. I played golf forever, so I, I play a lot of golf. I watch TV, football. Chelsea. <laughs> 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 uh, I did. Not, and, uh, not the best season. 
Well, I'm <laughs> let's sure. Not go into it. <laughs> yes, let's not go into it because if I do ask which team you support, <laughs> as you, you can see, I'm laughing at myself. Already. Exactly, I'm let's sure. Let's Man United. Typical Nigerian should be Man United or Arsenal, and, and yeah, there's so much pain you know, right, that is going on there. So let's leave. I, let, let me leave you out of it. Uh, so, so I mean, I, I, I watch a lot of sports actually. Uh, I watch golf. I play golf. Watch football. I read and um, watch movies. So I just like, I mean, it's, it's extremely intense work. Yeah, so I, I, I don't stop. So it's not a um, one, nine to five, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So anytime I have is downtime, you know, so I, when, once I'm home and I have nothing, then I just watch movies or go play golf over the weekend. So Do you ever think about not practicing anymore? not working at Templars anymore. Well, I, th I think I'm still young to, do, <laughs> to uh, subscribe to that. Um, I can imagine that some of the uh, young talks at Templars are waiting for me to get out of the way. <laughs> All right. So they can balance well. Uh, they can, so that they can now be the, 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 the head on shows, right? But um, yes, yeah, but that, that, that will come. That will come and... Um, I just enjoy um, practicing, yeah. right? And um, but it will come. Yeah, because I'm sure it gets to a point where it's not necessarily about even making money anymore. It's, it's not because you enjoy just watching. Yeah, that, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Seriously, I mean, and um, and it's been like that for a while. I don't want someone to think, oh, he thinks it's uh, it's, it's wealthy or he, or it's successful. So it's not saying it's not about money. But it's been like that for a while, for a long time. I enjoy what I do more than what I am, I mean, more than the. Um, uh, financial. financial gains. It's um, it's exciting. It's exciting being involved in the most interesting um, things going on. So sometimes you see certain things in the papers, more in the corporate side, not political, yeah. right? <laughs> but you're like, oh, I know about that. I know. And it's been reported, and you're like, you uh, you know, that's not it. <laughs> that's not that's really not, what that's not that's not what's happening, right? You yeah. know, stuff like that. So I enjoy what I that do. That must feel great. Yes, just it, it does. It, it does. It does. It does. It's probably the one thing I would have loved about being a lawyer. You know, just understanding the behind the scenes of a lot of these mm -hmm. amazing, you know, projects. Yeah. But yeah. Looking back at the last twenty seven years, or even thirty one from when you became a lawyer, your career generally, are there things you would do differently? It doesn't have to be regrets, but uh, maybe things you would have changed up or, you know, switched up a bit. We've followed uh our strategy to a large extent, uh, where, where we want to be. Um, well, just um, not, nothing jumps out to me that I would have done differently. Yeah. I mean, it's, like, like you said, there's a digital and tech revolution happening everywhere. Mm -hmm. And they're disrupting everything mm -hmm. banking, mm -hmm. even healthcare. Correct. Is the legal profession mm -hmm. immune to that? Because I've actually heard or read somewhere about apps now where you can get legal advice for how many pounds? I can't remember exactly, but it's, it's starting. Does that scare you? <laughs> or what could happen with your space? It doesn't scare or are you me. going to have to adapt? It doesn't scare me because that's what we already have one. Okay. We already joined it at Templars. So we, uh, we try to be as innovative as possible. Yeah. Keeping uh, up with the times. Yes, if not, you'll be swallowed. And that's why I said, I mean, you need to continue to improve every day. We have strategy meetings, strategy, strategy. I mean, literally every day. You need to continue to um, improve yeah. your offering, right? Are you at a place now where you're confident that Templars can run itself without you? We've seen a lot of these big firms disappear when a founder goes mm. or the partnership breaks up. Yeah. Are you confident? I am very confident that Templars can run itself without me. But um, the not that you're living anytime soon. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> definitely. I'm not living anytime soon. Templars can run itself without me. I am part of the team, one of 15 partners, yeah. right? Uh, <clears throat> Templars does not run with me. That has been a long time. In, um, that has um, passed. Templars runs without me. There are times I'm not in the country for two months, and the firm 
it's so completely it's, fine. It's doing very well, so yeah. I can do it. So a lot of people leave law school these days, just not sure what to do with their lives mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Either it's finding a good job, or do I even want to do this law thing, or you know, what part of the law am I going to head into? What do you tell a young lawyer today who is just out of law school? I mean, general advice. <laughs> Ooh, um, general advice. A young lawyer out of law school. What, uh, my question is, what do, you want, what do you want to be? Who do you want to be? What yeah. do you want to do? If you want to practice law, you need to be patient. You need to persevere. And you need to um, think it's true, meaning, but there are so many lawyers. How many can really work yep. in? Um, there are various law firms, if you know what I mean, right? So who, that's why. Who do you want to be? Do you want to be a corporate, high-flying lawyer? Do you want to go in-house? You know. So it's difficult, but it's just try to be the best at what you want to possibly be or yeah. do. You know. Read, 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 read. That's what. I, that's what I think. Be voracious. Yeah. Read voraciously. Read. Know the world. Know about the world. I mean, you have to be a discerning person to teach yourself to be discerning. To be academically smart is anybody can be academically smart. We see very smart lawyers, first class. We don't, sometimes we're like, nope, this is not for us. Because it's not, you have to be discerning, you have to be able to. So teach yourself all that and be a well rounded person. Yeah. Then you're an asset anyway, whichever way you feel. So try to make yourself an asset that everyone wants. Solid advice. Very, very solid advice. Well, thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you very much. I'm sure you've enjoyed this particular big wig. Of course, the practice of law is very dynamic, and the journey of this big wig goes a long way to prove this. His wealth of experience, his knowledge and understanding of what he does makes him stand out in the energy, oil and gas sector, as well as corporate law practice here in Nigeria. It was indeed a time well spent. Well, until next time, my name is Ebuka Obiuchendu. I'm a big girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to run things up. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're making great moves. Big moves. Yeah, yeah. Rap, 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 rap. I'm a lawyer. I love the practice. So. My daily moves. Nothing but magic. I'm a liar, but I don't even go to court. I 